Okay, let's start off with some forward and back running. So you start here, you're running forward and running back. And then punches. Keep your hands up, keep your feet moving. Next one is shuffle, um, either side to side or front to back, depending on how your space is. Make sure that you keep your hands up. If you want to throw some punches while you're doing it, that's fine. And knees. Other side. Make sure you keep the standing knee bent. You're doing more work that way. As long as you're doing the warm up, you may as well get as much work out of it as possible. And ladder steps. kicks front side back Okay, check your pulse. If you're not at at least 120, do that two more times. So run front and back, punches, shuffle, knees, ladder steps, kicks. Make sure you, at least twice, three times is better. Make sure your pulse is up to 120 and then come back to me to stretch. Okay, when you're ready to stretch, so I think I'm gonna angle this down a little bit so that you can see me if I'm on the floor instead of just seeing the empty ceiling. Reach up. And you're not just putting your arms up here, but you're pushing them towards the ceiling. And then reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Keep your chin up. Down to side stretch. You want to have both heels on the floor here. Well, you might not want to have both heels on the floor, but I want you to have both heels on the floor. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. And then straighten out your legs. All your toes are facing in the same direction. Both knees are straight, chin is up. Back is flat, reach down over the front leg, chest toward your knee. You should feel this primarily in the hamstring of the front leg. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, grab your ankle. And then down to the side stretch.
turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Knees straight, back flat, chin up, chest down towards your front knee. Have a seat. Put the bottoms of your feet together. Okay, if you can put the bottoms of your feet together and still keep your back flat here, not rounded like that, go ahead and put both hands on your knees. If when you let go, it rounds your back, take one elbow or one arm, tuck it there to support your back straight and just use your hand to pulse one, elbow, one knee down. side. Okay, put one foot out, pull the other foot across. If you can pull this one in and still keep both butt cheeks on the floor, pull it in. If pulling this one in gets one hip up off the floor, keep it straight out. This knee is in, opposite elbow is on the outside of the knee and you're pushing across. And then same thing on the other side. And then come up to a wide squat. Um, heels on the floor. Put your elbows inside your knees. Push your knees out and rock back and forth. And put your hands flat on the floor and straighten out your legs. Okay, um, I'm going to show you three exercises, walk you through them, explain what I want, and then you're going to do two times through 10 of each exercise. So the first one is inchworm push-ups. When you do inchworm push-ups, you start here, you put your hands down on the floor, you walk them out. Okay, you can either stay here on your toes or drop to your knees. In either case, your back is flat. So none of this and none of this. Keep your elbows tucked into your body. One push up, walk your hands all the way back. Okay, so down, hands out, one push up, and all the way back. Okay, those are called inchworm push ups because you're doing like an inchworm. Um, next one is a completely straight body sit up. Come flat on my back, legs are straight, arms are straight up towards the ceiling. They're not going behind my head, they start here. I sit up. So my arms are now straight still to the ceiling and back down. And then we've got one more. The last one is a squat and lunge. So when you do a squat, you want your feet. People will tell you shoulder width apart. My shoulders are only about that wide apart. That's way too narrow for me to squat. It's got more to do with how, how long your legs are and how flexible they are. So I got mine out about here. Toes need to be straight forward. And then when you squat down, you don't want to bring your butt back. You want your shoulders to stay over your hips. Okay, at the very least, you need to come here. If you can get all the way down, that's even better. When you do your lunge, you're gonna step back and you're gonna step far enough back that you have a 90 degree angle here so that your knee is over your ankle. You don't wanna be here with your knee out past your ankle over your toes because that's gonna stress your knee. Okay, so you start here, you step out, squat, in, Step back and lunge. Step out, squat, in, back, lunge. Squat, and this one side is one. So squat, lunge, that's one. Squat,
squat, lunge. That's two. Okay, so I want you to do inchworm push-ups, straight body sit-ups, and squat and lunge. 10 of each, 10 sets, and then come to back to me and we're gonna work on the week, the lesson for the week. Okay, this month we're working on accuracy. This week we're gonna talk about accuracy through stances. So we're gonna do some drills and I really want you to focus on how you're turning your feet, how you're rotating your hips, where those are coming in to generate the power in the stances, which I know is power, which was last month, but that's how you get accuracy is the same way. So the first thing we're gonna start with is just moving forward with the front stance. So Chimble Chassis, if you're in Tung Shido class, front stance if you're in AK. So we start here. My, in order for this stance to be proper, all my toes are facing forward. And my, my feet are the same distance apart side to side as they are front to back. It's got nothing to do with how wide your shoulders are. It's got to do with a mix of how long your legs are and how flexible they are. You have to be able to get the back of this heel, this heel on the floor, front knees bent, back knees straight, weights pushed forward from your hips, not from your head. So your shoulder, your head is over your shoulders or over your hips. Your shoulders are square. They're not pulled back here. What tends to happen is this toe, the back toe, if your stance is too long for how flexible your legs are and you turn your back toe up, it turns your hips and your shoulders off to that same corner. So everything needs to be here. So we're gonna travel forward. I'm gonna bring my feet together. So I'm facing that corner. Step out, still facing that corner. Rotate on the back heel and turn everything to the front. So in, out, forward, in, out, forward. And I'm gonna go back doing the same thing. Let me move this down a little bit so you can see my feet better. The feet are really the important part of this drill. So I'm here, in, out, rotate forward. In, out, forward. In, out, forward. Okay, you can add a punch, to, or actually a block makes more sense when we're doing the stance here. So I'm gonna do a high block. I'm gonna come in, out, rotate my hips forward and settle my weight as I block. In, out, forward. In, out, forward. Coming back the same way. Okay, so if you're thinking, that's power. We did power last month. Yes, it was power. And we did do power last month. But it all ties together. None of those things stand on their own. Okay, the next one that we're going to do is a, it's a rear leaning stance, but we're going to go front stance to rear leaning stance. And this is a tongue to no form, but then we're going to do another drill and tie it into one of the AK forms. Okay, so when I do... A regular cat stance, whether I'm doing this in Tung Sudo or AK, I got 70% of my weight here, 30% here. This heel is off the floor. I'm in a straight line here, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle, all in a straight line. A rear leaning stance is not a straight line here. I got 60% of my weight here, 40 here. The heel is touching the floor, but there's no weight on the heel. So I get to that by starting in Soko Chassi, which is a toes out horse stance. I'm gonna turn this foot in that direction and then shift my weight back a little bit, just enough to get the weight off that heel. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna transition from the front stance that we just did in the last drill to this rear leaning stance. Okay, so we're gonna start here. I'm in a front stance. Okay, if I start here and I come here, this is not a rear leaning stance. I start here, my feet are the same distance side to side as they are front to back. I have to drag it here to make the rear leaning stance. So one, two, three, four, five. And the other leg I'll do in the other orientation so you can see better how my stance is. One, 
two, three, four, five. So I'm in the rear leaning stance. If I pull my heel in, my feet are like at a 90 degree angle, heels together. Okay, and then the other thing that we're gonna do related to this is a reverse bow stance, which is from AK, but it's either, it's concepts or concepts, regardless of what style you're practicing. Okay, so when I do a bow stance, I'm gonna start here, feet are side by each like this, and I pull one back. Then I'm gonna take this foot and rotate, leave my toe where it is and rotate the heel out a little bit. Take this one, leave the heel where it is, rotate the toe out a little bit. Bend my front knee. Okay, if I'm looking that way, it's a forward bow. If I turn and look the other way, it's a reverse bow. So here, forward bow, reverse bow. Now in the Tung Sido stances, you want your front toe facing straight forward. Tung Sido, my, part, my opponent is far enough away from me that I could reach them with a kick. So my knee is not as much at risk. In Kempo, my opponent is much closer to me, so by having this foot turned in a little bit, if I get kicked here, I can drop this knee. Or if, or if they drop their weight on my knee, I can drop right to here, and my knee is less likely to be injured. Okay, so we're gonna start here, and we're gonna start in our reverse bow stance, and we're going to step back. I don't have enough room to do it again. I'm gonna do it this way so you can see. I'm here, reverse bow, can you see? Step back, reverse bow, step back, reverse bow. Okay, now I'm gonna turn that to a forward bow. Look, this way, now it's reverse bow again. Reverse bow, reverse bow. Okay, so I want you to do all three of those drills, back and forth at least a half a dozen times. Okay, lots of forms this cycle. And a lot of you guys are going, oh great, I hate forms, I'm not even the form. And some of you go, oh boy, I can't wait to learn another form. Well, guess what? What we're doing today is drills. So those of you who want to know what is the next move are gonna be less happy with this. But when we start working on what's the next move, you're gonna be doing them correctly, accurately, and you're gonna know why you're doing them. And for those of you who would much rather do self-defense, we're gonna understand why we're doing these moves. And then we put them into the forms and it'll make sense to your head. Okay, so we're going to start right from the beginning. We're going to start with step and punch. Feet start here. Put them out. I don't know. They tell you shoulder width apart. It's got nothing to do, and some of you have heard me say this a thousand times, nothing to do with how wide your shoulders are. It's got to do with how long your legs are and how flexible they are. So whatever my distance is here side to side, when I step out to a front stance, I have to have the same distance front to back, which means that this leg has to be flexible enough that I can get that heel on the floor. If my stance is so long, it's, well, if my stance is too long, my heel's gonna be off the floor. If my legs are less flexible, my heel's gonna be off the floor. In both cases, you need to make your stance smaller. And not only, okay, if you can't hold the distance here and you need to bring it in, you also need to make it narrower this way because it should be on two sides of the square. It shouldn't be if you have to shorten it. It's like when you, drag the corner on a picture on your on your computer or your phone it doesn't just get smaller this way or this way it gets smaller all the way that's what the stance has to do okay so i'm going to start here feet are out comfortable space bring them back so that they're all facing straight forward keeping my shoulders where they are i'm not going up and down okay shoulders where they are in out in out in Okay, feet together is called an index. I'm not entirely sure why we do it. We've always done it. Some old master probably decided why we did it. It makes more sense if I, my foot's always touching the floor, I'm very stable. I don't know why we don't, well, I, I guess I know why we don't come here. We just come here. There's no way to have any rotation. By bringing my feet together, lets me rotate my hips and my shoulders into the next strike. So I guess that answers itself. A lot of times when you have questions in karate, if you go, a little bit further they answered themselves okay so now my target for punch when i do punch make fist hands come in close the fingers put the thumb on the outside if you put the thumb on the inside and you punch something it's going to get broken so it's on the outside i have a nice straight line here none of this or that and no angles this way so nice straight line and i'm hitting with the first two knuckles 
find your ribs, follow them up to where they meet. That's your shoulder plexus. Target is right there. So my punch is not here, it's not here, it's down here. Yes, in a lot of cases, I would be punching someone in the face, but in a form, it's always solar plexus. So I'm gonna start here in my left jingle chassis, left center punch, should then cap, and I'm gonna step forward and punch. Okay, this hand starts palm up, rotates. We talked about power last month, power through rotation, and same thing going back. Okay, so that's that's actually pretty much in every form in the world, but white belts are doing basic form one right now, and that's the bulk of the form. Okay, beginners are doing one or two forms this cycle. One of them is basic form three, and we're gonna do a drill with cat stance and an outward block, Ani Subro Maki. Okay, so I'm gonna do cat stance, and I put my feet like this, keep my hips and my shoulders there, and take this foot, and I'm gonna turn it so my heels are still touching and my toes facing there. Now what's gonna happen with most of you when you turn your toes, your shoulders and your hips are gonna go with them. Don't let them. Turn them here, keep your shoulders and your hips there. Extend this leg, lift the heel off the floor. Okay, this stance is very much dependent on how long your legs are. Okay, so if you're five feet tall and you got short legs, your stance is gonna be smaller. If you're as tall as me, or as leggy as me, I expect your stance to be as long as mine. Okay, you're not here. You're not here. It's a straight line up this side. I got 70% of my weight here, 30 here. My heel's off the floor, but it's not up here. If it's way up here, it means your stance is too short. Extend it. Okay, look at my stance, and then either videotape yourself doing this stance or look in the mirror and make sure your stance looks like that, and not like this, or not like this, or not like this. Okay, so you're gonna get into that stance, then you're gonna chamber your hands, and a block on that side. So the hand that's blocking is gonna be on the outside. Both of them, if I open them, my palms are away from me, and I'm gonna block. So when I do the block, it comes from here, and it rotates, and it settles, okay? So rotation, backup mass. I know that's last month, but it's, it's all tied together. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna look, chamber, step, block. Then on the other side, look, chamber, step, block. Look, chamber, step, block. Look, chamber, step, block, okay? Um, I want you to do this like 10 times on each side. If you're a black belt, change it up. But don't skip the drill because you're a black belt. You, you still, you gotta do this a million times, okay? So look, chamber. When I chamber, I pull my feet, hands in, and I pull my feet in, step, block. This is not it. That's cheating. There's no step that way. Okay. Look, chamber, step, block. Look, chamber, step, block. 10 on each side. Okay. I'm doing drills from all the forms right now. Everybody can do these drills regardless of your rank. Drills are drills. Parts are parts. Okay. At some point you're going to use this either eventually in a form or in a self-defense. Um, Pings. Pangs are what the beginners are doing. It's what the inter advanced did last cycle. Pangs have blocks. They're straight lines. So something is coming at you and you're hitting it force to force. A chill song has a circle. It's not a block, it's a parry. P-A-R-R-Y, okay? Like if you're fencing and you, you, you strike and you parry, you're not blocking your sword from hitting you, you're catching it and using their energy to redirect it in another direction. So we do a chill sum, this is what we're doing. Okay, so last cycle we did these in chill sum ill row going forward here, where if I'm doing a ping, my block is straight. If I'm doing a chill sum, it's a circle. And in this direction, the difference is ping is straight on, it's right here. The chill sum, it comes here, it catches, and as I settle, I push it out of the way. Okay, so we're going to do a block. Actually, I'm doing it as a strike in chill sign, but I'm doing it as a circle. Okay, so in Tung Shido, if I'm gonna hit you, I'm gonna come straight out, or if I'm gonna do Yuk Shido, it's gonna come from here. So the rotation is just here. 
What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a circular strike. So I'm hitting somebody. Um, I could be hitting, you wanna be hitting something soft. So you could be hitting here. In this case, I'm hitting right here inside the knee. Okay, so my hands are gonna, they're gonna end up both facing palm up, which means they both have to start facing palm down because if they start like, if this one starts this way, I've lost my rotation. Okay, so they're both gonna start palm down. They're gonna circle here, and I'll show you this from the side so you can see the circle better, and settle into the block. So they're both palm up. So here, block. One, two, three, from the side, four, five, see the circle? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and now, my pet peeve. This is why I have a couple of pet peeves in this form. But one of them is at one point we do this strike that goes like this. Okay? And everyone's like, well, what practical value is that? You don't have a lot of balance there. No, I don't have a lot of balance there, but forms are stylized. So what I'm showing you here is that I have enough flexibility to get down here and then enough strength to get back up without having to do this. Okay, so a lot of you guys are gonna go, I'm too old, I can't do that. If you start working on it now, and you work on your strength, and you work on your flexibility, yeah, you'll get it. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to start here, come down here like this. Take one foot, bring it out. Bring it in, take the other foot, Bring it out, in, out, in, out. Okay, then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna stand up, down, up. Okay, so I slide this foot out as I go down and to come in, I'm not pushing up from here. I'm pulling this in a little bit so both legs are pushing me up. Out, and up, okay, I want you to do 10 of those on each side. I don't care if it's hard. If it's hard, hold onto the table. Okay, next drill. This is from Pelsong? No, I'm missing a form in there. Ah. Okay, row high. First of your black folks are doing row high. Everybody can do this drill. This is my pet peeve from row high, okay? Settle and rotate, where have you heard that before? Okay, so there's a place in the form when we do low block, rotate and punch. Now what I tend to get is this. Okay. I need to see, okay, the block, is it a block or a strike? Yes, so you're, we call it a block, but what you're really doing is striking somebody here, and then you're getting out of the way and before they fall on your knee and punching them again. Okay, so I want you to start here Horse stance facing the front, pull back to a Japanese cat stance facing that corner. So one, two, three, four, five. And then on the other side, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five more on each side. Next drill. I'm gonna start here. I'm going to step in, in chamber, step back, center block in soko rook chassis, and rotate to chimbal chassis and punch, and then come back and do the same thing on the other side. Step back to soko rook chassis and block, rotate to chimbal chassis and punch. We did this rotating from chimbal chassis, soko rook chassis to chimbal chassis, in the warm-ups way back at the beginning. So we start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then one last drill. Um, I am going to start here. I am going to rotate and block. 
but the rotation is not really what's driving the power in this block. It's a strike. It's the dropping my weight back up mass. So I'm gonna drop my weight in block and then step forward to a cat stance and settle my weight so I have more back up mass suddenly and I rotate and punch. Okay, so I'm gonna come forward doing that. Settle and block, rotate, settle some more and punch. One, two, three, four. That's all I can fit before I run. I don't know if I can use the new side. I haven't practiced it on the other side. Let's see what happens. One, two, three. That's the step, I block out. Step in front, block out. Step out and push. Step in front, block out. Step out and push. This is sometimes, like I said, sometimes in karate, you gotta go back and pull the pieces out to make it work. It goes on the right hand in the form, so I haven't done it on the other side. Okay, so I want you to do five on each side. Okay, we're gonna work on some break falls. Um, they don't have rugs in my house. People with allergies shouldn't have rugs in their house. I have lots of wooden floors. Some of them have little bamboo mats. Bamboo mats are not nice to break fall on either. So I have this double layer of mat. It's a six foot square yoga mat. I got it from Amazon. If you're curious, it's, I've had it a long time. If you're curious, send me a message and I'll see if I can still find the link. And I'm gonna start here. I'm actually gonna start in this direction so you can see what I'm doing. When you do a, a break fall, I mean, the whole point of a break fall is not to split your head open on the pavement. This is particularly important at this time of year when the whole world is a sheet of ice. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna tuck your chin. You're gonna grab your knees, pull your knees into your chest. I think I have enough room to do this. And you're just gonna roll up and down. Okay, I'm only rolling back as far as my shoulder blades and back up. My head is never hitting the floor. Okay, so if you're in the kids' class, or you took kids' class, or you listened to me teach the kids' class at some point, you know the answer to the next three questions. Okay, the first question is, when you do a back break fall, what hits the floor first? Answer is, but. Second, next question is, what hits the floor next? It's hands. And then the other question is, when does your head hit? And the answer to that is never. Okay, so we're gonna start here, we'll start sitting, so your butt's already gonna be on the floor. I'm going to start when you do break fall. Actually, we're going to backtrack a little bit. Start like this. Put your hands, palms down on the floor. Hit the floor. Actually, come over here on the wooden floor and put your hands down. And hit palms down on the floor. Okay, that's not really offensive. Now turn them the other way so your knuckles are down the hip. Okay, imagine doing that from five feet up onto the pavement. That's going to hurt. That's why your palms always hit the floor when you do break fall, not the back of your knuckles. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. My chin is tucked, so my butt's already on the floor. As my back hits, then my hands hit, my head never hits. So it's actually butt, back, hands. So butt, back, hands. Okay, the other thing you wanna do with your hands is you want them to hit down here, near your hips. You don't want them to hit here or worse up here, because that's going to injure your shoulders, which is probably not as bad as injuring your head, I guess, but it's still not good. So we start here, butt, back, hands. Then you're going to get a little bit taller. Butt, back, hands. Okay, then once you've done that, I want you to stand all the way up. And some of you are going, oh my God, I don't want to do this. You're not going timber straight back. Your butt's still hitting first. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this sideways so you can see what I'm doing. I don't wanna hit my head on the bricks either or even hit my hand on the bricks, that would hurt. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. I'm here, my butt still hits first, then my back, then my hands. Butt, back, hands. Okay, now I have done this walking across the parking lot at the karate school with my cup of coffee in my hand and have managed to break fall and not spill my coffee or not spill more than a couple drops at the top. 
Okay, if your foot goes out from under you with the ice, it's not gonna be so pretty as what we just did but back hands. But if you've done this a thousand times, you're gonna have your chin tucked. That's the important part. So what I want you to do now is I want you to find somebody in your house and have them get down on the floor next to you. And I want them to push you from sitting and I want you to fall, but back hands. Okay? 10 times at that height. Then I want you to come up here to a squat and I want them to do the same thing. I want them to push you, but back hands. 10 times. Okay? Then I want you to do it from standing. If you're going, oh my God, I'm not ready to do that from standing yet, do it from here. But back hands. Okay? But I want somebody in your house to knock you down three times from sitting, three times from the squat, and three times some version of standing. Okay. Weapons for beginners and intermediate disciple is a scream stick. Um, when you hold a scream stick, we're gonna start with our drills in our right hand because most of us are right-handed. We will do left-handed ones too, but you're gonna start, you're gonna put your left hand at the bottom of the stick. And you take your right hand and you're gonna put it above. So you let go of the bottom one. So you have about a fist's distance underneath. That lets you use both ends of the stick. I can strike with the front end and I can, I can hit with the other end or I can catch. Like I can catch it behind somebody's neck or catch their arm and pull. Okay, so you're going to, this might work better if I crank it up a little bit. Here, you want to see my stick and not my feet. I'm going to bring it here, and I am not rotating my shoulder. My shoulder and my elbow are staying still. I'm just rotating my wrist. And put it in the other hand. And then I'm going to do it in front of me. Okay, again, my shoulder, my elbow are stationary. The motion is just for my wrist. Same with the other side. This side is slower. This is my stupid side. What you're going to find is for most of you guys, things in your smart side are gonna work really well. When you put both hands, your stupid side will follow along your smart side, but when you put it just in your stupid hand, it's not gonna go nearly as well. Okay, so what I want you to do now is if you can get somebody in your house to hold the stick out for you like this, this, is, this drill is ideal if someone else is holding the stick, but it works even if they're not. So I'm gonna hold my stick out. Okay, here I have to rotate my shoulder a little bit because I'm working by myself. But I want most of the rotation to come from my wrist. Okay, same thing with the other hand. I don't know if I'm smart. My hands are smart enough to do it on this side. Yeah, my left hand is really stupid. Then we're going to do the same thing up. Don't hit yourself in the head. And the same on the other side. Like I said, stupid side. Okay, this drill is ideal if you do it with somebody else. If someone's holding for you, have them hold the stick out here for these and have them hold it way out here for these. Don't have them hold it here because then if you miss, you can hit them in the head and you're gonna have to drive them to the ER and sit there for hours while they get a the, uh, CAT scan to make sure that you didn't like split their skull or give them a brain bleed. Okay, this cycle, bow. I know it's not a bow, it's an screaming stick, but I can't use a bow in the house. I don't have a, ceiling fan. I just keep telling you this is a ceiling fan, but you probably can't see it. See, there's a ceiling fan and it's got strings. And if I use a real bow, I'm going to take the ceiling fan down probably by way of the strings. Okay. So I use an screamer stick 
to do bow form in the house. Uh, advanced classes doing bow, black belts are doing bow. Teens, if you come to the t Monday teen hyper class, we're doing bow. Kids, if you take hyper pro, which I think is also on Mondays, we're doing bow. So bow is definitely a theme this cycle. So we're gonna start off <clears throat> with holding the bow and some basic strikes. And some of you guys are like, I've done this before. I don't care. It's practice is a wonderful thing. Okay, <clears throat> your bow should be, they'll tell you your bow should be as tall as you are. I'm five and a half feet tall. I find a 66 inch bow, which is five and a half feet tall, is a little bit too tall for me. And the five foot bow is a little bit too short for me. If I have to pick one or the other, I go with the five foot. I have some custom ones that are like 62 or 63 inches, which I find ideal. <clears throat> However, I don't use them in the kitchen. Okay, but you're gonna take your bow and you're gonna mentally divide it into thirds. If you have a fancy tournament bow that's shiny and sparkly, it's probably got a grip in the middle. And the grip is probably only about this big because when you're doing an extreme form, you're probably holding it right in the middle. So that makes sense. When you're doing a traditional form, which is what most of these are, you don't, you don't, you don't want your hands that close together. You have to mentally divide your bow into thirds. So this dividing into thirds would be here, but for a five and a half foot bow, for me, thirds is about here. So I'm gonna hold it there anyway. My right hand is always palm up. There's some, there's some differences, but when we do, you still generally start here and change it in the form. So my right hand is palm up and my left hand is palm down. When I start it should be, it's in my right hand here. When I bow, so I bring it to both hands, should be, chin up, I tuck the left end under, chin yet, I bow here. Okay, so I'm not bowing like this, but the bow comes out. Now what you have to be aware of is that the bow has another end. So if there's somebody standing behind you and you do this, you're going to hit them with the bow. So you have to be conscious of both ends of the weapon. Okay, so we're gonna start here and we're gonna do some blocks. I'm going to bring the bow in and block up. So I'm not blocking here. Somebody's trying to hit me in the head. I'm blocking high and blocking low. High, low, high, low. Get somebody in your house to get in a scream stick. And have them hit you high, have them hit you low. It doesn't, doesn't, don't care what the form is for hitting. What I'm interested in here is the blocking part. Block high, block low, block high, block low. And then we're gonna strike. Okay, so hands are still here. When I strike, my bow is not coming from the top of my shoulder, it's coming from the side of my shoulder. So it starts here, it's a little bit uphill, back end, front end's a little bit downhill, and I strike, I'm striking high. So this end is still at the height of the neck of someone the same height as I am, and this end is at my hip. It's not as obvious with the stick as it is with the bow, but I'm striking high. Then I'm gonna strike ribs. Then I'm gonna strike the outside of the knee. So high, middle, low. High, middle, low. Okay, I want you to practice that. If there's somebody in the house who can practice this with you, have them get in a screamer stick and hold it out here so you can hit, don't have them hold it here or you're gonna hit them too. 